Hello woodchucks and farmers, welcome back to Oceanside Forest, and yes, I've been cutting down some more trees. Uh, middle of the day of October, and this is the lot we were looking at at the end of the last episode, and I got a full trailer of logs here, probably too much, I had to empty out some because the trailer kept wanting to tip too much to one side, so uh, yeah, I got some logs spread out here, but I think I've cut down 59 trees from here, I think we're at 300 at the end of the last episode. Uh, 59 trees, uh, five since I got back on here, uh, currently, but yeah, 59 trees have come out of here. Then bring them to the mill. You may notice also the money's up to 300,000 because I've been taking breaks from cutting down trees and going back and forth with our winter wolf truck here. Uh, I've been using the 7R John Deere tractor to deliver, uh, pallets of wood in many different shapes, sizes, and, uh, you know, all that fun stuff down to the store. So we're up to 300,000. I hope I don't tip over on the way down to the sawmill. It is very possible. But uh, yeah, I've been selling all that because we need roughly just shy of 400,000 to get myself a tree harvester. A tree harvester is gonna make my job uh, getting the trees down, trimmed up, and cut to what this trailer can fix. I got a lot of empty space here. So, you know, I, I, don't, I don't, I'm not running the lumberjack mod to where I can use like a tape measure. So I've been trying, these trees I'm cutting down are 35 meters in length. So trying to cut them roughly in half because we got a 20 meter trailer here. Uh, but if I can get the tree harvester, that'll cut it to 25, or sorry, 20 meters. Or I, can, I don't know if I can, I don't know if there's a 17 meter or actually an 18 meter probably be more perfect to cut them directly in half. And I could probably stack them in here a little bit better. But either way, we're getting the logs on down here. The sawmill is... You know, just, you know, push it on through with all the wood I bring on down through here. I also have sold the bark mulch. I was looking at that also between episodes, and I got one log that didn't quite go. So, we had about 130,000 liters of bark mulch. The prime time to sell bark mulch is in August. So, I figured I better sell it now because we were getting a lot of it, and the sawmill is only, you know, the sawmill holds a lot, but not that much as uh, we you know we're not going to be able to hold that much until next august so i sold all that i got a whopping like maybe eight grand for all the bark mulch that i sold so not a whole lot of money of course the money's coming from all these pallets right here let's go ahead and grab some more i am waiting for the rain to stop the rain should be stopping pretty soon i think somewhere uh just before one o'clock the rain should stop and we can get back to i i haven't gone back over to making the other field and drilling that so we're gonna be doing that here in a little while but i'm hoping with uh in the meantime while i'm doing all that more planks or pallets i keep saying planks because uh we are making planks but all these are pallets of different types um yeah if we can uh, go ahead and make a whole bunch and get ourselves up to four hundred thousand, which we should be able to do pretty easily uh we can buy ourselves a tree harvester and then i can really get to work in between episodes if need be so the seminar is coming in handy for other things. I, I mean, think about it. I used to use the Deutz, uh to haul this on down. Well, of course, <laughs> if you can really remember, it's not that long ago, we had to use the Deutz with the winch on the back to, to push two pallets down here to buy a small trailer. Then I was bringing two pallets down at a time on the small trailer until we were, we were able to afford this trailer. And then I was using the Deutz hauling this trailer on down, which, you know, it did the job. And then we saved up enough to buy ourselves the Winter Wolf, but I mean, we, you, we're using the Winter Wolf for a lot of other things. And now I'm using a 7 iron John Deere tractor to do it while the Winter Wolf is just going ahead and grabbing all the logs. But yeah, we're looking for just shy of uh, 400,000. I think 375 will do it. Uh, originally, I thought I was looking for like the cheapest tree harvester uh, that's available in game. I thought it was 330. It's actually 370,000, and it comes from the Platinum Edition tree harvesters. Uh, I did look at some tree harvesters on the Mod Hub. Really couldn't find nothing that was, you know, going to save us a whole bunch of cash, or you know, looked like it was going to be really fancy. So we're actually going to be using uh, a mod that you have to download if you get the Oceanside Forest map, and uh, I'll show you that later on once we purchase it because I only need another 70,000 and we should be able to do that. Actually, let me speed up some time here because one, I want the rain to stop and that way the sawmill can keep on going and I can go start doing some more farming up by the power lines. 
which I think uh, once I get that other field on the other side of the power lines made, I'll probably sell that cultivator. Yeah, that that was that that was totally my bad on that one. Um, I mean, nothing wrong with the cultivator; it can make a field, but unfortunately, it's not technically a plow, so the field still needs to be plowed. So that cultivator is something we're not going to really need because we. I pretty much only use direct drills. Uh, that, that's the way to go for me. So direct drills it is. So the cultivator is not going to really come in handy for what we're going to be doing here on Oceanside 4. So I can actually get some money back on that right away. And then once the tree harvester is purchased, then we can really start uh, bringing the money. And then I think during the winter, uh, I think we'll probably get the farmyard start to come together. The only thing we got up there right now is the seed hut. And I, I think there was a comment about, you know, I should be putting the seed hut in the middle of all the fields, which, yeah, it's, it's very true. That's a good idea to do. And there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, for starters, I'm just going to put it in the farmyard because I'll be taking the drill out of the farmyard. So when I take it out of the, there to go to work, I can, I can just top off the seed and fertilizer there. If I find it's too much of a hassle to keep going back to the farm to refill, well, we can always just put another seed hut down because at that point, uh, when we get to that point, we're going to have enough cash. And that seed hut does not cost that much at all. And I, I'm going to try to spread the fields around on the map. I don't want them all clumped together. Uh, I don't want to, like I said, I, I also don't want to be cutting down trees all this in one area. Um, we're going to try to put a field like off every road somewhere at some point. Yay, so the rain has stopped. We're up to 358,000, which is great. Uh, let me go see if I got another load of pallets to bring on down. And then we'll just sell this one more. And I'll get us uh, probably where we need to be. And then we'll go up to the power lines and start cultivating another field, which is not going to take us long. And then, of course, we'll drill in some barley because last episode we did wheat. Uh, so we can plant barley. I don't think there's anything else I can plant in the winter that's going to be beneficial to us. Uh, let's see here. I mean, October, I think, is... I mean, we're not going to get into poplars. Uh, we're not doing no grass work on this map whatsoever. And uh, oilseed radish, probably probably not going to get into that at all. A cover crop. But, you know what, you never know. But then I found out on Hinterland, we did a test with the oilseed and precision farming and crop rotation. It really didn't help us out hardly at all. We do have a whole bunch of wood chips. I, if I sold wood chips, I probably got about $100,000 worth of wood chips in there. And also, I think uh, when we do have a good handle on what we need to buy in certain orders, I think upgrading to uh, the Profi Liner Crone Trailer, that'll hold more pallets in there and we can start really bring stuff on down but also I think it'll get tiresome to start you know keep on doing that every day and uh, then maybe I'll just start selling direct but we will not get the 100% of the sale I think it'll be like uh, we get 90% and 10% goes to whoever's transporting the material all right well let's leave that be for a while and uh, let's come up here and get the other field done that way it's in and we're all set and we got crop growing and that way when next July comes we should be able to harvest well that's our wheat fields right there and it's time to go ahead and make a barley field and I think I might also put down the rest of the gravel in this area right here so this field stops doing this uh, the shadowing of the white on top there's our little seed hut now, I might be moving that later on anyways. I don't really have a vision of how I want the farmyard to look. Uh, all I knew all I knew when I started this map that it's going to go here and the production buildings and the chickens are going to go down there. That's, that's all I pretty much knew. And the fields were going to go everywhere else. So I'll probably at some point, uh, like I said, we are going to sell this. Uh this uh, cultivator that we have here, but I'll probably be getting the John Deere plow that we use on Hinterland. I do have that mod already uh, activated for this play uh, 
right here in Oceanside Forest. And this uh, 7R should have no problem hauling it around. And the 7R actually has a lot of horsepower. I had to double check on it. It's like 370 some odd horsepower on this thing. And that plow that we use on Hinterland only requires 325. Plus it's wider. And the only thing we're really using it for is to create fields. Once we get the fields in, and it's also considered a plow, we don't have to plow the fields and the crops we're putting in are not gonna require us to plow the fields again. So like on other maps, when I do like uh, sugar beet, potato, corn, those type of crops where you have to plow after your harvest. We're not going to be doing that here because we're just doing wheat, barley, sorghum for the chickens. Uh, if we get enough fields for the, all the chickens that we're going to have, we could get into this planting some other crops and selling them. I'm actually was thinking about uh, if we ever get that far, maybe doing sunflower and canola uh, and maybe getting some bees worked in around the fields. Although no man's land. I was had to think there for a second. Uh, we kind of did it on no man's land where I had some bees around and really uh, the radius that the beehives actually help you on the fields wasn't that great so uh, but I mean it'll, it'll just be something that we could add and uh, collect from the honey and get some bonus I guess from the bees so these are small narrow fields yes uh, but we cannot plant wheat or barley in the springtime on this map. But we can do sorghum. So next spring, like where we started the episode, that field, even though it's not a field yet, but it will be at some point, uh, that'll be sorghum next year. And yes, I do want to start with just eight chickens uh, and work and let the chickens just do their thing. And I do have uh, transporters for chickens. So those eight chickens are the, are the only ones we're going to buy. And then uh, when the chicken pen becomes full, we'll just use our little crate that we're going to be using. I think it does hold eight chickens, and we'll just move them from one uh, chicken coop to another, and they can just keep on doing what they keep on doing. Yeah, it's good to see the sun come out. One thing I did notice when we started over here last episode... Last episode? Yeah. It was kind of dark over here, but then again... It is October, so the sun's lower in the sky, and plus, well, there's trees everywhere, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe once we start clearing out some more trees, we'll be fine. Like I said, I, I, don't, I don't want to just start cutting down trees everywhere. Well, maybe once I get the tree harvester, I can really go to town. Billy the stump grinder is going to be very, very busy, I think. But this is episode five, and I, you know, like I said, it hasn't been that long. But I can remember like the first episode where I was cutting down those, I think they were 25 meter uh, pine trees that I put down. And, you know, I had to cut them down, trim them, cut those in half. No, I didn't cut those in half because I wasn't loading them onto the logging trailer. Sorry. Uh, I was just cutting them down and then we're using the doits on the winch and hauling one to two trees at a time. And slowly the process is speeding up. But even now, the cutting down the trees and having to delim them still. And I don't always cut the trees in half. I got upset at myself a few times. I'm not upset, but... Like, why won't these load? And I get out, like, oh, that's because I didn't quite get it in half. The log was, you know, 21.5 meters long, so I had to cut it again to make it auto load onto the trailer. I don't want to get rid of all the trees just because, well, a few things. One, it'll just be like an open space, and I'm not really looking at that. Uh, I don't want to see open space completely everywhere. Uh, two, I don't want to take away from the habitat for the deer. You know, we want to see the deer run around. I want them to be happy. But the deer do require some meadows as well, so they can they can forage on some some grass, some meadow grass, like between the power lines. They probably would. The deer would probably love it if I planted some corn. 
I know that's what the deer love where I am. They, they love the cornfields. Okay, so let's turn that off. Fold that up and we'll just... I'm going to leave this right here because I'm going to bring that on down. And, yeah, we're going to sell that. Didn't even occur to me when I bought the cultivator. Of course, it's not a plow, but I thought since it was... We got the... Uh, the mod activated for cultivators can plow and create a field. Well, I think the mod actually says it will, it's allowed to create a field. It doesn't say it's a plow that's allowed to create a field. So, yeah, you know. But either way, um, since it doesn't really plow the field, it doesn't help us on out. Uh, I think our drill is full enough. Let's switch on over to barley. Now, also, I think the winter months were probably... I may maybe even skip a month or two um, just to get to next spring. But I guess it all depends on how far I get. But sorghum, I don't think we can plant anyways until April. Kind of hard to tell on the texture on the ground if it's actually uh, being planted. But I think it is. So, of course, we don't know the soil type. So, um, it's not really putting in the amount of fertilizer that it may require. It is putting in fertilizer, but I don't know how precision farming works if you don't know the soil type and it doesn't know exactly what to put in. I just really wanted to get the farming on this series just because I didn't want to lose some of you who were not interested in the forestry part, just want to do the farming part. So I, I want to make sure I, I kind of incorporated the farming in as quickly as I could. I think I would have preferred to gone until next spring just planted all sorghum and just done a whole bunch of forestry, but I understand forestry work can get repetitive, just like farming work can as well. And that's why I'm kind of happy to do a map like this where I'm not doing any grass work. Seemed like I do a lot of grass work. I was doing a lot of grass work with Hinterland and Goldcrest Valley. But no grass work here. We do still need a baler though because I'm going to need the straw for the chickens. It may sound kind of weird, but if you're unfamiliar with the enhanced animal mod... Uh, the chickens will be able to produce manure, so, you know, it's not that important for us here in the series, but I figure we give it a go and have some fun with it. Oh, I probably should slow down the time. I got it on time at 5. It's almost 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And with October, it's probably going to be dark now in just a couple of hours. So I just want to make sure we get this planted today. Because if I don't, well then, like I said, we don't we can't plant nothing until April. And I'm hoping at some point, once, uh, like I said, once we get the main things that we need to buy... Um, we'll start buying like the bigger equipment and I'm talking about air carts and sea drills uh, tractors with like 600 horsepower we are going to be required our combine is going to be very expensive I don't know if I'm going to be able to afford it by next well the way the money comes in I probably would be able to The next purchase definitely definitely needs to be the tree harvester so I can really cut down the trees at a faster rate. Save me some in-between episode work time. I mean, this is going to rough idea. How many hours have I got in the map so far? That'd be an interesting thing to see. I mean, you know how long my episodes have been. Uh, but I got 15 hours on this map now. So this is episode 5. Um... I mean, let's just say they go, my episodes are like an hour long, which is, 
you know, this a little bit probably over what they actually are. So five out. Well, I don't have this one done yet, but five hours of uh, recording time done and 10 hours of off camera work I've been doing. So. And probably the first hour doesn't, shouldn't really count because that was setting up the map. So we'll just say nine hours of off-camera work I've been doing. I'm not going to get all this in one go. There have been a couple of comments about the sawmill, though, that they, uh, people think it just produces too fast. Which it does, but that's why we're using it. Because that's the only form of income. That's pretty much it. I mean, I could be cutting down trees and just being, bringing the trees down. And to sell the trees. But we're not going to get as much money as we are out of the sawmill. And I want the series to progress at a decent rate. I don't want to be stagnant. You just watch me with a chainsaw. Like, you know, like the first 15 hours. Uh, probably 11 of those hours of me are just with a chainsaw cutting down a tree and delimbing. That's, that's what it's been. If it wasn't for the sawmill, we definitely would not be putting in a crop this month. Alright, so if I look at the map, which I don't think I've looked at since we've bought the land, but yeah, there we go. And our scoring, uh, the one thing that's going to be kind of interesting about the scoring is... Technically, there's only three lots, right? So lot number one's not going to have no fields. Uh, lot number two's not going to have any fields. Although it's showing a score there. Why is it showing a score? There should be no field there. That's going to suck. Field number one doesn't show a score. Uh, but this is for lot number three. That should be all direct drilled. Um, but yeah, basically all the fields I put on lot number three are going to tally together. But as long as we go up, that's, that's fine. As long as we don't go into a negative uh, and we go into a positive. That's just a bonus score for us. I thought about not even doing precision farming on this map, but I'm just doing it just because when I drill a field with a direct drill with fertilizer, I really don't have to go back in and fertilize it again. I mean, I could. Uh, to get just a, the extra 1 or 2% that the crops use while it's growing. Um, but I'd just rather just drill it, fertilize it, and not have to go back in with a fertilizer spreader afterwards. Now let me go ahead and park our drill over here. Uh, quickly, what I want to do, and I say quickly, let's go into construction. Because I have free landscaping on. Uh, landscaping, painting, gravel. And yeah, we're just going to put a gravel everywhere. Because I want this to stop flickering white. I mean, it's still going to be white because I'm putting down white gravel. But basically, it's going to be all sheds. Uh, we got to, you know, of course, put it down a silo. And once we get the farmyard kind of uh, get going and built, I'll probably do it off camera because I did some landscaping work on Hinterland as an episode. And I got more comments saying they'd rather not see that. Rather, I, I don't think I got any comments about people saying they like they enjoyed watching the the landscaping going on, and I don't think as a time lapse it works out well. There now that little funny white shade. I, I don't know why I did it with the forest ground, but now we got a whole bunch of gravel put in, and we are set to go. Uh, let's go grab our cultivator that we've had for about an hour or two. And we'll go sell that, and if that doesn't get us up there enough, uh, then we'll have, we got, I'm pretty sure, pallets to sell. But it's time to buy yourself a tree harvester. And like I said, it's going to make my work a lot easier. 
You know that old saying, work smarter, not harder? Well, the tree harvester is going to make me look smart. I mean, this is a very fine cultivator, but I'm not going to need it. We got ourselves a direct drill. Yeah, also, um, our little trailer over there that we have, uh, that's got to be replaced with a nice farmhouse in the future. Yeah, I think the winter months, uh, the sawmill is going to bring it all, you know, us a whole bunch of cash when we go on a spending spree. And I don't know, I, I'm kind of torn, you know, should I, you know, should I wait and buy stuff when I need it? Maybe, you know, there's a chance the stuff I'm actually looking for will come up for sale and buy it used. Uh, I've heard some comments, uh, like on the Goldcrest Valley series, but like, well, buying used, it just keeps breaking down faster and faster and faster, uh, which is true. So maybe I should, just, you know, buy everything new and not even look at used stuff. Maybe just in the beginning we can, oh, I don't know why I'm bringing this down here. I just realized, I just remembered that this workshop down here does not have a trigger for selling. Uh, I will double check on this. So usually when you bring it down, you get a better price. But we can repair, we can customize. Well, I'll repair for $3. So the value of the cultivator is $43.7. But the only way to sell it currently is to go in here. Yeah, so I'm, I'm losing about 4,000 from being able to sell it. But, you know, that's what we got to do. Uh, yeah, so we should have enough money. Let me turn off the John Deere. Should definitely have enough money to go buy yourself a tree harvester. Now, we're going to come in here and we got to go to a forestry machinery. Now, like I said... Uh, what we're buying here, this is a mod that will be downloaded when you get, if you get the map, Oceanside Forest. Uh, but this is the Lizard TF840 B-Pack mod. Um, I don't think I have this on my mods list because it came, like I said, with the map. So I don't know the direct link for it. But I'm pretty sure if you go to Forest Machineries on the mod hub, and if you look for the TF840 B-Pack, I think you will find everything that we're about to buy uh, in that mod pack itself. So this is the beast that we're going after here. Um, so the wheel brand, we're going to, I'm not going to even try to pronounce offloffers, offloffers. Uh, that gives us its tracks over the tires. So that just helps us from getting the logs in between the tires. Uh, that can be a real pain as we all know. Uh, let's see. Uh, everything else I think I'm keeping the same. Uh, we can put a log support here on the, uh, the main arm, but... I don't think we need that. Um, we can add, uh, so it's also a logging trailer behind us, but I do not want that because we got a beautiful logging trailer. Then, of course, we got the main colors. Uh, let me know what color you guys want this to be because um, I can change it to any color because I got the color mod, so if I press and hold this, I can change the color to whatever we want. So I'll see where the comments come in and we can change the color later on. Uh, you know me, I don't mind going crazy with the colors, so... Uh, yeah, we'll just, I'll just let you guys uh, pick up the color. Uh, for now, um, since the tracks are, it's mostly blue and white, let's go blue and white. And I think we're all set there. So that's a uh, 293,000. Yes, I think we're all set there. All right, so while we're here, now we got to go down to this forestry equipment. Now what we can attach, and this should be part of the mod itself as well. Yeah, you can see this is the TF840 B-Pack mod pack that we're getting, but this is the uh, 7000 XT Lizard Tree Cutter. Now, the main thing what I'm about this is the working with, it can cut down trees up to 160 centimeters, which is way bigger than the tree harvester I've been always using, uh, which is this one right here, which can go up to 80 centimeters. So, yeah, that's 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 like twice the, wait, is it, yeah, it is twice the, uh, the diameter of the tree. Uh, where is it? Right here. Yeah, 160. So we want to go ahead. We can't change the color in that, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and buy that. We got the money, as yes, we do. Um, so that leaves me actually with 30000 That's great. Uh, let's go ahead, instead of me running over there. There we go. Stop back up into the harbor, all right? Uh, should be able to 
attached to it at some point. I've done it before. Oh, it goes on. Aha. It took me a second, but it's got to go on, on top. That would be very, very helpful. There we go. Top speed is 12 miles an hour, so that's not too bad. So we're going to go up the road and go to where we started the episode. And we're going to start zipping down some trees. Uh, on the way up there, let me have a look at some things here, though. So, of course, we can change the cut length. So we got 12, 15... So it's either 15 or 20. Well, I don't want to go 15 because 15 and 15 is 30 and the trees are 35. So we'll just leave it at 20. I mean, it's still not too bad. That'll be a 20 meter log and a 35 meter log. My chainsaw will get a break. And of course, as we all know what this does, this tree harvester will cut down the tree um, and I'll cut it at 20 meters along with delimbing the tree at the same time. So Billy is going to be very busy because I, I do want to make these fields on the big size. Uh, someone uh, last episode, I think, looked up how much chickens require for feed. And I think they were estimating for the 10,000 chickens I was saying. And I think they said we're going to need like 3 million liters of grain a year. Seems excessive, but we won't know until we go along. Um, we'll find out. Oh, yeah, and also with the animal mod, I think I mentioned it before, but if I didn't, the animal enhanced mod that we're going to be using, uh, which allows us to get manure from the chickens, it also does a couple of other things. Uh, same thing as we kind of did on Hinterland, but that was a different mod. Um, if the animals get too old or if uh, they run out of food, they can die. And two, as well, the offspring can be either be a rooster or a hen, uh, male or female. And that, that is true if you use the animal enhanced mod. That's true in all animals across. It's like if you have cows, you can have a bull or a cow, right? And this has come over to here. Now, the one thing I did notice while I was testing this... Uh, it doesn't really give me so you don't see the uh, line at the bottom of the tree but it does show you know I can cut down the tree now it's going to cut up to 20 meters in length take all the limbs off Now, something else we will be doing in the future as well, but not right away, is I want to get the, the farm built up as it is. Uh, oh, that thing swings a lot. That could be problematic. Um, but someone was kind of saying, you know, don't always use the auto loader for logs. So we did a little bit on Silver Run Forest where I could get the wheel loader in a couple of years on the farm. That is kind of expensive. Now, we can get the uh, the grappling hook, but we might load trees up that way once in a while. Not a whole lot, uh, but we can go ahead and do it at some point. So we're not going to always be using the auto loader, but probably 95% of the time, yeah, we will be. So being able to grab trees up to 160 centimeters in diameter, I should have no problem cutting down all the trees on this map. I wonder about the sequoia trees, because we never were able to cut those down on Silver Run. I don't know what the diameter of those trees are. Oh yeah, but also using the tree harvester, another thing I can do is we can get the trees up in a pile. So before, it's just cutting down the chainsaw. 
so uh, unless I drop the trees perfectly, they were never lining up. So that John Deere plow that I need to purchase uh, to create more fields, that's going to cost like 80000 Uh, something else that we will need, though, is the Sea and Spot Weed Sprayer. Yeah, that can happen once in a while because it probably got caught on a stump. And by not having that carriage on the back for hauling logs around, because that's something I definitely won't be doing, uh, my, my stumps won't get caught on that too often. This to me was a huge purchase today. It's going to make progress creating fields and everything else a lot better. Well, the logs always spinning up the back is something I've never been good at with the tree harvester. A couple years ago I was watching I don't know who it was honestly because uh, I was just Trying to get better at the, the tree harvesting part and I was watching them and they were using tree harvesters and they were loading it right onto the logging trailer as they cut it. I'm like, yeah, I don't have that experience. Oh, come on, you cut the first one good and then try to spin up on the back of the, the tractor? Don't be doing that. I just realized I said to uh, do some weed spraying. I would assume the only tractor that might be able to put narrow tires on it is the Deutz. I don't think the 7R is going to be able to have narrow tires on it. This winter, what we need to focus on on the farm here is to, uh, well, buy more equipment, uh, get some upgrades as well. So, like, you know, the grain trailer might need to be upgraded that way, uh, bringing the bark mulch and all that stuff down, not that big of a deal. We'll get that done on one trip instead of six or seven. Maybe also getting ourselves the Profi Liner trailer. We can load up more pallets to bring on down at the same time. Perfect. Alright, I'm going to leave this parked right here. Can I... You know, I don't have anything up here at the main farm. Uh, the one thing I wanted to see... Actually, you know what? Let's just grab the John Deere. Uh, let me just have a quick look, because uh, I'm right here at the workshop. Can we put narrow tires on the 7R? Uh, standard. Well, there we go. It just said rear narrow tires, but is the front tire also narrow? I think so. I think these are, these are all narrow tires, so I could do weed spraying with this. All right, that's that's good. We know we know we can do that now. All right, what we, I want to do is a couple things. Uh, first thing, we're gonna go back to the sawmill. I want to grab one more load of pallets. I want to sell those, and I think we're gonna go back up to the farmyard once we do that. And I think we're gonna put down our first shed with winter coming. We want to make sure we have a place for our seed drill and whatever we need to put away with the winter months. Although I am using the 7R quite often. I guess the Deutz could go in there. I'm not using that hardly anymore. 
Uh, the trailer should probably go in the shed as well. I don't know how much the shed is. Because I forgot. It's been a couple episodes since I uh, downloaded it off the mod hub. Let's go sell the palace that we do have. Planks, long planks, wood beams, and planks long. I do believe is what we have to sell. As you can see, 5 o'clock in the evening and the sun's getting awfully low in the sky. I was looking on the mod hub for a farmhouse that looked like a beach house. because I, I kind of want to put it down here at the beach. I mean, that, that'd be almost like a farmer's dream. You get to farm and all that, but uh, when it comes time to relax, your farm, you know, your, your house is right there in the beach. Of course, there may be some of you that, that don't like going to the beach, so. All right, that does give me 53,000. How much is, uh, I gotta go into construction, sheds. Oh, so it's only 35000 We got the cash. We got the cash for that. All right, let me drop off this trailer at the sawmill, and we'll drive the 7R on up, and we'll find our place to put our first shed. So, like any farmyard, you got to think about your first shed, right? Where do you want to put it? Because, well, you know, we're going to be making a lot of money here. I guess if I misplace it and have to delete it later on, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Well, at least now with the white gravel on the ground, I'm not getting that uh, texture that we were seeing before. All right, so the question is, how how are we gonna how, how do I want to do this here? You know, what? I think we'll just put the first shed over here in this corner because there's the road there. I'll be a big entryway, so I think over here would not be too bad of a place for it. And I really haven't seen how big the shed really is. I just saw it in the mod hub and thought it would look great. Uh, I want to spin that around like this. So what is the difference between the American Old Garage mod and the American Old... What's the difference? Oh, so this, is, this one just doesn't have doors on it. So that's the only difference? Well, I think we'll, for an extra 5,000, we'll have the doors on it. I think that's good. All right, so I kind of forgot. How do you, do I have to, do you have to change the color before or after? Uh, you may have to change the color before because <laughs> I haven't done that in a long time. Uh, all right, so that was 40,000. Hang on a second. So that's kind of interesting. We got our whole money back for that. Well, like always, if you have the helper HUD on, because I haven't done it much, change color is right up there. Um, I am thinking kind of... Maybe an olive green type of color. There we go. That's that. That's going to do it. So, yep, now we have the doors to open. Uh, there are lights in here, so are those automatic or uh, lights on, I guess. I don't know if they're automatic or not, but now we got ourselves a shed. How about that? Let's go grab our drill. Let's keep the engine on running. And get our drill put away.
Where's that little flashing, flickering yellow light coming from? See it on the stone over there? Oh, do I actually really have beacons on here? And I didn't. I was testing it on the way up, and I didn't see them. All right, little LED uh, beacons. Didn't really see them too well. Let's go ahead and put our drill away for this season because we are done until, like I said, we do the sorghum next spring. So we can put that way in the back. And there we go. And close the doors. And a long walk back home. Kind of, because we're going to teleport back home. Because we are going to call it an evening. No, enough with the chainsaw. I had enough with the chainsaw. Uh, yeah, I didn't check actually the used section, see what's there. And nothing that we're really looking for. So, let's go ahead and call it a day. Now, we still owe $200,000 to the bank, but we're going to hold on to that for now. Because we're not paying that much in interest. Uh, being November, let's wake up at 9. And back on out. And of course, the sawmill is going to have run through all that wood I put in there yesterday, which is fine. Oh, the one thing I was going to check, and I kind of forgot, when do I sell the wood chips? So, yeah, I'm not going to go buy this, because by that, I got one point, almost $1.4 million worth of wood chips. Um, but if I do a value at sell point, currently, if I go to the shipyard, I get just over $1 million. But if I go to Billy is Back, uh, we get $168,000 worth of wood chips. Now, that's a lot of wood chips. Um, yeah, when is the best time to sell wood chips? Well, of course, we started in August. We haven't been here a full year yet. But I would say August, I mean, sorry, uh, November right now might be the best time to sell wood chips. So we'll have to sell those. That would be a nice amount of income. Uh, as for the store, they got nothing that we need. So, yeah. And, of course, everything here has gone through. Uh, let's see, we got about uh, 27 pallets of planks, 17 pallets of planks long, 7 pallets of wood beams, and six thousand uh, dollars sorry six planks of, of beams okay so the duplicate is beams and wood beams not planks and planks long what well, is planks and planks long and i think i said long planks before uh yeah there's beams and wood beams now so yeah we got that plus uh, we got all the oh wait have, did i reach information everywhere right now did i reach another 100 trees no we're at 369 so when we get up to 400 we got to pay five thousand dollars to get the uh stumps all ground up but uh we might be there at the beginning of the next episode but it's time to get back to cutting down some more trees uh selling more stuff and um slowly uh building up the work area just a little bit or the farmyard and let's just walk a little bit faster don't really have a way to teleport over to the field well let's see how the wheat and barley did overnight and i can already see it has germinated so maybe we'll get our sea and spot sprayer and get in here and spray for weeds. Uh, that will help us out quite a bit uh, on that. But the crop is looking very, very good. Uh, the deer are probably munching on some of it already. Who knows? Uh, but this will be for the chickens. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, our first summer and fall are just about over here. And it's time to get onto the winter months. And of course, we got ourselves a nice, beautiful shed down there. But that's going to do it for today, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching as always. I'll catch you again right here in Oceanside Forest. But until then, have a good one. At least we got some birch trees around here to give us some color. <laughs>